Good morning. My name is Alex, and you're watching Brotherly Love Gaming's Monday Morning Catch-Up, where we're going to talk about some gaming news, announcements, and releases you may have missed. You can start your week off right just by knowing a bit about what's going on in the gaming world. Let's dive right in with some exciting new announcements. Fans of Octopath Traveler may or may not be happy to hear that a new prequel is on its way for mobile devices. Titled Octopath Traveler Champions of the Continent, or at least that's what unofficial translations have been calling it so far, the game is set for release in Japan sometime in 2019. No official word on an English version just yet. If you like Octopath Traveler but don't like the idea of a mobile version, then take solace in the fact that the developers also confirmed a full sequel to the game is in the works, However, it's just farther off than this mobile game. Also in JRPG announcements, The Alliance Alive is getting an HD remaster for Switch, PS4, and PC in Fall 2019. If you don't know, The Alliance Alive is a critically acclaimed JRPG originally released on the 3DS just last year in March 2018. I personally only played the demo of the game, which you can still download on the eShop if you want to give it a go. I liked what I played but just had too many other JRPGs on my plate at the time, so I never picked up the full game. Maybe this will be my chance to get it. And the Yakuza fans out there, the new game by the same studio who created that series, Judgment, has finally received a confirmed release date in the US, now set for June 25th, 2019. I'm really excited for this one. You play as a former lawyer turned detective who is tracking down a serial killer. It looks to be a new spin on Yakuza style gameplay and I personally can't wait to get my hands on it. Some good news for my fellow collectors out there. Limited Run Games has announced physical editions for the action platformers Bloodstained Curse of the Moon and A Whole New World, both available this Friday, March 15th. If you aren't familiar with Limited Run Games, basically they release small quantities of physical copies of games previously only available digitally. A Whole New World will be available in limited quantities on PS4, while Bloodstained Curse of the Moon will see a limited release on PS Vita, and an open pre-order on PS4 and Switch. Collector's editions and other goodies are also available, so check out the links in the description if that sounds like something you want. And if I can do a little self-plug, Spence streamed Curse of the Moon on our Twitch channel a couple weeks ago, so you can watch the replay of that on our YouTube channel now to see if the game is your speed. Links to that in the description as well. Let's hit up some headlines quick. There's a big rumor going around that a previously rumored Xbox One Maverick is actually a discless console called the Xbox One S All Digital Edition. Now that's a mouthful and it will be coming out this spring. Spence and I talked about this one at length in last week's podcast, but if you think you'd like to buy a digital-only Xbox One, let me know in the comments. Sony released an update for the PS4, giving players the ability to connect an iOS device to their PS4 through remote play. As long as you're on a Wi-Fi network, you can connect to your PS4 from anywhere. This is essentially the same feature that the PS Vita used for remote play, but unfortunately, as we all know by now, not many people had Vitas. Reps in peace, Vita. There's a lot of controversy around Anthem, the new game from Bioware and EA that was highly anticipated at one point, but has since come out in a fairly broken state, depending on who you ask, and has many people wondering if the attempt at a live service game is going to go the route of Destiny's popularity or follow 76's infamy. Honestly, there's too much to go through in the time I want to make this video, but some highlights include game crashes that actually cause system crashes on PS4, meaning that the entire PS4 shuts off. There were concerns that this was a bricking systems, but apparently that wasn't actually the case. The new controversy is EA apparently banning players for using glitches and exploits in the game. Now the reason why this is controversial is because using these glitches doesn't give you an advantage over other players. In many online games with player versus player content, exploits are bannable because you gain an unfair advantage. Many are arguing that this isn't the case with Anthem though because there is no player versus player mode. The game is entirely player versus enemies. But Anthem continues to be updated seemingly daily so it remains to be seen exactly how this game will shake out. We'll keep you posted as best as we can keep up with it. Speaking of game updates, the popular turn-based strategy game Wargroove just got a new patch which features some highly demanded quality of life features. New difficulty settings and options to skip moments like fight animations and cutscenes have been added to smooth out the experience. So far people seem to be into it. I wanted to check out this game when it launched but unfortunately have not had the chance yet. If you, like me, still need to get it, it's available on Switch, Windows, and Xbox One. Last but certainly not least on the news front, Sunday March 10th was Mario Day. Because like, M-A-R-1-0 looks like Mario. Anyway, this week Nintendo has some cool deals in celebration of their favorite plumber. 
I've linked Nintendo's breakdown of some other deals in the description, and no, we do not get any cut from it. Just wanted to pass along the news to you. All right, let's break down some new releases. The highly anticipated Devil May Cry 5 hit PS4, Xbox One, and Windows on March 8th. It's been well received so far with a score of 87 on Metacritic. Game Informer called it a stylish return to form. Also on March 8th, 3DS fans got what seems to be the last first party Nintendo game on the horizon with Kirby's Extra Epic Yarn, a port of the acclaimed Wii game. It has an 80 on Metacritic, and GameSpot called it a yarn good game. I think that's supposed to be a pun on darn good, right? Left Alive, Square Enix's strange new PS4 game set in the front mission universe, but featuring stealth action gameplay instead of front mission's tactical strategy gameplay. The game has not been very well received by critics or fans, so if you're looking for this one, maybe consider renting it first. GOG saw the original Diablo arrive on its platform, apparently the first time the classic game has ever been available digitally, which sounds odd to say out loud. When announcing the release of the game, GOG and Blizzard said that more classic Blizzard games would be coming to the storefront with the original Warcraft planned next, but no release window has yet been announced. We'll keep you updated as more information comes out. Subscribers to both PlayStation's and Xbox's online services saw some new free games this week. PlayStation Plus added The Witness, a puzzle sort of adventure game from the creator of Braid, and Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered, a game which I'm sure I don't have to explain. I really love The Witness, so I think if you haven't played it, you should go check it out. You explore an island, solving increasingly difficult puzzles, and saying anything else would kind of ruin the experience. This is also the first month that does not include PS3 and PS Vita games, so once again, let's pour one out for the Vita. Xbox's Games with Gold added or is adding a bunch of games. Adventure Time, Pirates of the Enchiridion, I think that's how you pronounce that, Plants vs. Zombies, Garden Warfare 2, Star Wars Republic Commando, and Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. These games have different availability dates, so double check the dates at the link in the description for when they'll each be available. We'll also try to update when a game becomes available or when it's about to expire so you don't miss out. Game Pass subscribers can also pick up Just Cause 4 and Lego Batman 2 right now, with F1 2018 and Fallout 4 coming on March 14th. Finally, coming later this week, The Division 2 will be hitting PS4, Xbox One, and Windows this Friday, March 15th. That's a lot of games. Now I want to hear from you about what games you're playing and what news you are most excited about. Did you pick up a new release or are you working through your backlog? Let's talk about it in the comments. While you're down there, give us a like and subscribe to the channel to see more news, discussions, and gameplay videos. If you find any news this week you'd like me to talk about on next week's episode of the Monday Morning Catch-Up, please tweet at BrotherlyLoveG1 on Twitter with your news tip and the hashtag news. That's going to do it for this week. Until next time, my name is Alex, and I hope you're all caught up. <laughs>